Gap is crashing after slashing its sales growth outlook because of terrible execution over at Old Navy. The retailer also announced Old Navy CEO Nancy Green is leaving her position this week. Joining us now to discuss is Adrian Yee, Barclays Consumer Discretionary Analyst. Adrian, great to see you. I am very clear uh, in my piece on the Yahoo Finance homepage today. This announcement from Gap it is akin to a, a hot, stinky mess. But I look at your report out here this morning, you're at a $7 price target, so you see more downside to Gap. Why is that the case? So Old Navy is 55% of total sales for the Gap, and it's the vast majority, call it three quarters of the EBIT. So as goes Old Navy, so goes GPS stock and the earnings prospects for the overall company. The issue that they cited was a big sales miss. Um, along with the sales miss, you have building inventory. So they're going to have to be very, very promotional, and they're going to have to course correct their inventory over the next two to three quarters. It is very likely that they have already bought and committed to back to school. As you know, the lead times have accelerated to you know three to five to seven weeks longer than we would have expected. In a normal environment, you're already committing to back to school. In this environment, you're committing to late back to school. So we would expect this to continue for the duration of the year. And I want to give you a hat tip, uh, Adrian. You you downgrade your rating on Gap before this uh, really absolute disaster today. So uh, hat off, hats off to you. My question is this. Is it now time for this company to be split up into various parts? Now, this is something they looked at doing a couple years ago. But you look at the results today. You look at the results for the past two quarters. And, and you just get the sense this is now a failed experiment to have all these brands under one roof. We agree. I think it is now too late to execute the split. Remember, the split was going to be Old Navy, right, into one piece of the business, and then, to, then the remainder, the remain co, was going to be Gap. And so now a split doesn't really make sense. We have our discussions about spinning out Athleta unto its own, that Athleta could grab a valuation that is akin to the entire valuation of GPS. I will argue that that, again, is a very risky strategy. We all know that the athletic apparel category was a COVID winner. I think that's going to be a very tough sell to spin off that piece of the business. They're not Lululemon that ha is em embarking on international growth and all of these other top line drivers. They are actually expanding into athleisure wear, right? So more casual apparel away from the core of sort of like the athletic piece of it and more into the casual to and from which, as we know, there is no white space. Adrian, so bottom line here, is Gap salvageable? You know, that is a, the million dollar question. So this has been an ongoing struggle since late 99, right? When to 1999, when Mickey Drexler was there, they had a moment in the sun with the Gap division in 2011. Um, when we had that colored skinny leg, uh, you know, trend. But since that time, it is very, very difficult, I think, for the Gap brand, right, to um, uh, reincarnate itself because they don't have a touch point with the millennial. Having said that, Old Navy can get back on track. Old Navy is one of the, you know, standalone, off-mall, value-priced, uh, uh, you know, opportunities for, um, for the lower-end household income. And so Old Navy has predominantly off-mall locations. They're in the right real estate locations. And so this truly is, you know, one of the things that we noticed when we were walking the stores is when Bata Quality came out, which was to expand the sizing in all the SKU offerings, what it ended up doing is reducing SKU count, which is basically choice count, right? So if you're going to expand inventory by, you know, 20% because you're going to add all these different sizes, it has to come from someplace. And so that's what we we feel has been part of the strategic misdirect. Um, and so that is salvageable, fixable. But again, six to nine month lead times, you know, this year is pretty much, you know, they're gonna have to rewrite um, kind of the guidance on 2022. And the next opportunity there is going to be, you know, nine months from now. Uh, Adrian, humor me, uh, because as you know, I'm a, I'm a former retail analyst. When you model out, uh, valuations uh, on Gap, are you putting a zero valuation on Banana Republic and Gap? And then the real market cap for the company now essentially sits with Athleta and then secondarily Old Navy? So, yes, uh, given your, your background, that's exactly what we're doing. 
I, I will actually say of all the different brands right now, Banana is working. Banana is on fire. We have not seen promotions at Banana, but it is such a small, it's a you know low double digit piece of the business that's basically benefiting from the reopening and return to work. And that's the other kind of more transitory thing that I'll say. Old Navy is very casual, right? As we all know, there is a shift from product to services um, from your prior guest, right? So we're getting a shift in spend. And then within the product category, within apparel, you are getting the shift from casual to return to work, going out, travel, all those other things that people want to spend on that they have not been spending on. So the share of closet is shifting away from kind of the old Navy look. What worries me, uh, Adrian, is that uh, CEO Sonia Segal, uh, she's turned around the old Navy business, very well regarded in the industry. And, and she was thought to be the savior for this overall company, but you get the sense even if she wasn't there, who can run this company? Who can get it right? And that the brands have just been so damaged. I would agree with you on the gap. I think one of the great things that she did is she diminished the importance and reliance on the gap brand. And so even though we're having a, what we call it's not Old Navy's brand moment, and that happens. I mean, that definitely happens, right? Um, the shift that we, that we talked about, Old Navy and Athleta are good assets. And I think what was happening was in the portfolio of the business, she was quietly sort of winding down the weaker players and managing those sort of like, you know, to do no harm, so to speak. So to the extent that there is some value and real value in both Old Navy and Athleta, which we would love to see come to fruition, um, but the at the end of the day, if you have not sort of ingratiated yourself with the millennial and the Gen Z consumer, and remember, they're shopping on fast fashion now, right? They're shopping online, multiple new different brands. Um, and I don't think that Gap or Banana Republic have done that well at all. Adrian Yee, you just made Brian Sazi's uh, day, if just not his it. week. I just home run. I can't. Discussion. That's why we call her up. I don't want to talk to anybody else. <laughs> Best retail analyst on Wall Street by far. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Love you guys. Thanks so much, Adrian. Adrian Yee of Barclays. Okay.